Greetings Italy from the Southeast Plains of Colorado in the United States. Uh, my name is Rick Wallner. I'm the Chief of Interpretation. Uh, I work for the National Park Service at a small national park called Bent's Old Fort National Historic Site. We're on the plains of Colorado, not up in the mountains. We're about three hours or so southeast of Denver. And uh, I'm sorry I'm not able to be with you there in Italy today. Uh, I'm sure Aaron Walsh will do a wonderful job uh, answering your questions about your project. But I'm here to provide a little uh, background on the National Park Service perspective on the uh, partnership we have going on with uh, an immersive education initiative and Otero Junior College uh, working with Ben's Old Fort. The fort itself is a uh, adobe trading post uh, built along what's called the Santa Fe Trail in what is now the southwestern United States. At the time the fort was constructed, which was the year 1833, the fort was right on the border between the United States and Mexico. The river right outside the fort was the border at that point in time. And 1833 doesn't seem very old, I'm sure, to, to folks in Italy, but in the United States, uh, that's, that's a long time ago to our young country. So in 1833, uh, the Bents and St. Brain were the first folks to come out here. It wasn't the U.S. military that pioneered the, out here or the United States government. It was United States businessmen. And that's what the fort was built for. It was built for business. It was built to make money. Uh, constructed in 33, the three partners were Charles Bent, uh, his younger brother William Bent, and their partner here in the middle, Saran St. Marine. So these three gentlemen constructed the fort uh, of mud uh, in 1833. They brought about 100, 150 workers up from Mexico to do the construction work. And as I said, this fort was about making money. The business here was trade. Uh, here you see a shot of inside the trade room of Ben's Fort. And even back in the 1830s, uh, again early for the United States, this was a global business. The trade room was full of goods from all over the world. You had wines coming from France. You had blankets made in the woolen mills in England. We had tea here from China. And from Italy, beads. So these glass beads hanging up there uh, towards the ceiling there, uh, trade beads that were very uh, important in the trade with the tribes, Many of those were made in glass factories in, in Italy. So uh, we even have a connection to, to Italy here. So we were all about trade, uh, but the fort didn't last very long, uh, even though it was the first extension of the United States into this part of the world. It uh, uh, only lasted 16 years. Uh, changes having to do with the war with Mexico, uh, diseases coming out to this part of the world, uh, things like that led to the demise of the fort, and in 1849, it was abandoned. Being built out of mud, it eventually dissolved, basically, back into the earth, and there was just a mound of dirt here. Uh, in 1960, it became a national park, part of the national park system, to commemorate the role trading posts like Ben's Fort played in the opening of what is today the American West. So when it became a national park, the United States did an extensive archaeological excavation. The National Park Service excavated all the foundations of the fort. So uh, that told us where walls and doorways and fireplaces were, and things like that. But we still didn't know exactly what the fort looked like. We had to do some more research. And fortunately, we came across drawings that were done by Lieutenant James W. Abair, who visited the fort a couple of times. He was with the U.S. military. Uh, was out on a scouting expedition in 1845, came out with the military in 1846 during the war with Mexico, and Lieutenant Aber did drawings of the fort, uh, did sketches, did watercolors of the fort, and one day he went around and he measured the whole fort, and did almost a blueprint of the thing, which told us the dimensions, even tells us how tall, tall the flagpole was. These drawings that Lieutenant Aber did were used by students at Otero Junior College when they were reconstructing the fort in, in the video uh, game Minecraft. The National Park Service used them as well, and in 1975-76, so about 40 years ago, the National Park Service actually reconstructed the fort, rebuilt it right on the original foundation. So today the fort is the same place it used to be, and uh, we'd like to think it looks pretty much like it did back in 1846 when Lieutenant Abrier um, visited. So today we have the fort like this. 
and it is open for visitation. We get about 4,500 school students visiting the fort, uh, mostly uh, fourth grade students that come and visit the fort on field trips. But now, with the Minecraft construction of Ben's Fort, we feel we'll be able to reach millions of students. Students from all over the world will be able to come and in Minecraft walk through the fort. Uh, thanks to the construction work by the students at Otero Junior College. So that's kind of the, the impetus behind um, building the fort in Minecraft and getting involved with the Immersive Education Initiative to uh, bring the fort to more people. And it ties in very well with what the National Park Service in the United States is trying to do now. Last year was the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service in the, in the States here, uh, 2016. And the director of the Park Service, our leader, said it was vital that we must find a way to connect to the next generation uh, of park visitors and park supporters. So as part of that centennial, there was a document created called the Call to Action. The Call to Action laid out uh, what the Park Service should be doing in the next century to reach out and carry its mission to people. And there were 39 steps outlined in that call to action. And I'm going to point out a few of them here that are directly related to this project we have going on. So step number two talks about creating deeper connections between the younger generations through a series of diverse park experiences. We want to collaborate with education partners and youth organizations. So we're collaborating with the Immersive Education Initiative. We're uh, collaborating with Wahanta High School, with Otero Junior College. And we want to involve at least 10,000 youth in a multi-year project uh, progression of experiences uh, from education to internships to employment. And again, that's kind of the, the a part of this whole thing with the Otero Junior College students as they get uh, to develop their skills in virtual reality and 3D imaging and things like that as part of this project, they are able then to carry those skills into future employment. So uh, carrying it all the way through, so having that progression. Another one of our steps is providing multiple ways for children to learn. So one of the things we talk about here is virtual field trips. So again, having this Minecraft version of the fort, kids say in Italy can come and walk through the fort through Minecraft and get a tour from one of the rangers here uh, without actually having to come all the way to Colorado. We also want to have online resources. Again, that's where you'll be able to access these versions of the fort, the Minecraft version, the virtual reality version, and educational partnerships as we've developed with the Immersive Education Initiative. Another step is talks about going digital. So again, reaching new audiences. So having a, a National Park Service digital experience that's rich, interactive, up-to-date content from every park and program. So again, uh, with the Minecraft project, with the virtual reality, uh, as uh, things develop at the park, at, at uh, Bento Fort, we are able to update our offerings uh, online and keep everything up-to-date. And finally, we have out with the old. Uh, to engage national park visitors with interpretive media and offer interactive experiences where you can, in, in Minecraft, walk through the rooms of the fort. And it specifically talks about innovative, immersive, fully accessible, learner-centered experiences. So again, that's what this whole project is about, to be able to immerse uh, people who aren't able to come to Colorado in a Bensold Fort experience through Minecraft, through virtual reality, through 3D imaging and things like that. So, uh, of course, you folks being at the Immersive Education uh, Conference will know about the virtual reality's uh, role in, in history. Uh, some of the incredibly uh, vivid uh, historical experiences you have in things like Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty uh, this one down here in the corner is actually done by Williamsburg, which is a, a historic town here in, in the United States, that they have had a, have a virtuality experience online. So uh, certainly lots of uh, opportunities to uh, um, use these products to teach history. And of course, we centered on Minecraft here for the initial uh, work with Ben Sold Fort. Uh, you probably know more about Minecraft than I do, but an extremely popular game 
And when we have kids, fourth graders come to the fort now and do their tours, when I talk about things like flint and steel, they know about that stuff because of Minecraft. When we talk about how they started fires with flint and steel, they know about that stuff uh, because they've, they've seen it in Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft, of course, can be used to build incredible things. Uh, here we have Notre Dame, the cathedral. Another national park in, in the United States is called Mount Rainier in Washington. And someone has built a roller coaster that goes all the way down Mount Rainier in, uh, in Minecraft. So uh, it can certainly be used for applications like ours. So here our version, uh, which I'm sure Aaron will share more about, and so will uh, Megan Hotchkiss Trail from Ontario Junior College. 2015-2016, uh, the Minecraft version of the fort was constructed here, and uh, we've had the opportunity to share it with people around the world. Uh, May of 2016, we had a video exchange uh, with a Minecraft club in Melbourne, Australia. And here you see uh, Megan and two students from uh, La Hunta High School that we video conferenced with that club, and uh, Matt Frankmore and Alicia Martinez uh, actually led students from Australia through the fort in Minecraft. So again, we had an opportunity to have kids from the other side of the world uh, visit Ben's old fort. So we want to continue that with some of the other things we're working on, which I'm sure Aaron will talk a lot more about. Uh, virtual reality filming that Aaron's done here at the fort, 360 degree filming that Aaron's done. So we'll be taking it now past Minecraft, taking it to the next levels and building more of a virtual Bensole Fort world where someday a student may be able to walk into the fort and meet a virtual William Bent and talk and interact with a virtual William Bent and have that sort of experience. So we're uh, really looking forward to where this partnership is going to take us in the future. We've had a great success so far working with the Immersive Education Initiative, uh, Otero Junior College, La Honda High School, and the National Park Service to uh, bring the Park Service into the 21st century and uh, find new ways to connect with our, our visitors, our audience, and with people all over the world. So uh, we, again, look forward to the, the future of this partnership and working and maybe bringing some other uh, uh, good uh, opportunities, chances to see what we've done with technology uh, to you in the future. So thanks very much for giving me the time to share this with you, and I'll throw it back to Aaron in Italy. Thanks.